Oh, hi. All right, so <clears throat> what I wanted to do today was um, through this activity that, that I left for you, um, introductory activity, to figuring out um, how scientists um, are able to tell where earthquake originated. All right, so that's going to be that's your mission for the learn how scientists are able to do this and to actually do it yourself. So um, when you take a look at the sheet I had you, um, they left for you. All right, um, down here we have it's called the travel time graph. It basically tells how these two different waves, um, these two different types of waves that are used to 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 determine where the earthquake is, um, how fast they travel. So the blue line is the P wave. Uh, P waves are for primary. Um, they travel faster, so they're detected at all these different seismograph quicker. The purple line represents S waves. S stands for secondary. Uh, they travel slower, so they get to these detecting second. Secondary, um, primary first. All right. So up here. If you were able to print this out, you, you, you have this. If you weren't able to print this out, uh, pause, copy this data table right up here. What you're going to be doing is uh, for, for each of these distances from the epicenter, um, you're going to you're, you're going to fill in um, the travel time for the P wave, travel time for the wave, and the lag time. I'm going to do the first two of these together with you, and then you can do the last the last three yourself. So let's look at this one. Uh, zero kilometers from the epicenter. We want to know the travel time for the P wave. Location is coming fast today. Uh, the travel time for the P wave. All right. So we're down here. Distance from epicenter. Zero. The travel time for, for the P wave, which is this blue line, is, is zero. So in here, you're going to put uh, zero. Travel time for the S wave. Uh, you got this purple line here is the S wave. At zero distance from the epicenter, zero kilometers from the epicenter, it travels um, zero. So you have a zero here. And the lag time uh, is going to be the time between these two. So S minus p so s is zero p is zero have zero take away zero you end up with also zero and, and that makes sense because if you're right where an earthquake is happening right at the epicenter um you're going to know as soon as it happens the instant that it happens that earthquake then you're going to know oh, it's, it's right there it's right underneath me. so that's going to be zero we're going to 100 kilometers from the epicenter. Travel time for the P wave, that's the blue line. At 100, going up to the P, slide it over to the end to see what that equals, and that's going to be about 15, uh, 15 seconds. So you're going to put a 15 in for the P wave. For the S wave at, at 100, uh, that's the purple line. Come up to here, slide over to see what that equals. That's halfway between the 20 and the 40, so that's going to be 30. So here it's going to be 30 seconds. And the lag time, the S minus P, 30 minus 15. I don't have 30 fingers. I don't have 15 fingers, but imagine that I do. 30 minus 15 is going to be uh, 15 seconds for the, for the lag. So um, pause this video, print out or or or, or copy down uh, this chart, and fill out the rest of it. Okay, we're back. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take all this information uh, that that you just figured out here, and we're going to put it into this graph. So let me move myself out of the way. There we go. Okay. So what we have over here in our graph. 
um, we have, uh, if you have this graph printed out, cool. If you don't, just draw it quick along your x-axis. You're going to go from 0 to 400 along your y-axis, from 0 up to 60. Uh, you're going to label the graphs. You got uh, lag time on the y-axis, distance from epicenter on the x-axis. All right. Um, so, let's, again, let's do the first two points that we did together, together, and then you can do the rest. Um, so right here, for our uh, distance from, from epicenter, first one was zero. If you remember when we calculated our lag time over here, we figured out that was zero. So over on your graph, where zero meets zero, I'm just going to put a dot. I wish I had the tool on this computer that would let me put a dot. I don't. I'm still doing it. All right. Second one. For 100 kilometers from the epicenter, if you remember, we figured out that the lag time was 15 seconds. So over here, um, where it says 100, we're going to go up, up, up till we get to 15, which is going to be right about here. We're going to put a little dot. After you put the two dots, uh, you're going to draw a line to connect them. So just imagine I'm drawing a line from here to here. And that's what you guys are going to do. All right. So you guys on your own, you calculate the 200, the 300, the 400. So plot those points in, connect those dots. And that's really all that I have for you today. Now, what I'd like you guys to do when you finish that, go into the assignment page on Classroom. And, and click the button that says um, completed or finished or submit or, or some turn in. I don't know what it says. Uh, it says something. Uh, do that. I know that you did it. And if you want me to check it before we go on for the rest of the week, because you're going to need this graph for the rest of the week, um, take a quick picture of it, send it to my email. I'll give a quick look at it, give you either a, a thumbs up or, or a thumbs down or, or a thumbs in the middle or, or something like that. Um, if you have any other questions, send them to my email, uh, rwalker at uh, waterbury.k12.ct.us. I uh, hope you guys are well. I'll be back with more stuff tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.